fierce, leave Uriah. Just, just, just abandon him, let him fight on his own. So that he would be killed, and now he could have Bathsheba legally. So, and I'm thinking to myself, like, you know, like, this is stuff you, you see on America's Most Wanted, you know? This is stuff you, 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 you see on, on, on FBI Most Wanted list. Now, just to note that many people don't read the Bible, so they don't see these stories. They usually go to church and people will take certain verses and recite certain verses, but you actually went deep into it, so you got to see the whole picture now. Yeah, I got to see the whole picture. You know, and all of these things did not sit right with me. You know, because I said to myself that these are supposed to be prophets. You know, these are supposed to be the people who are supposed to guide me to the right character, you know? These are supposed to be people that, for the Jews, because, you know, as a Christian, I believe that the Old Testament was for the Jews. It was not for Christians. It was for Jews. But this was supposed to be the guiding post for the Jews. But these people are worse than, than people I've known that have spent their whole life in prison. These are people that not only would I not want to follow them, if I saw them on the street, I would turn and run the other way and go probably call 901 America's Most Wanted because they got to be on somebody's list. So that was the first thing that, that said to me, something has to be wrong here. There's, there's, Either the stories are wrong, or these people can't be prophets. I mean, this just can't be. So finally, you know, you get to the New Testament. Right? You know, then you get some of the books going back. You get some to some of the books like the Book of Ruth. The Book of Ruth does not even the word God is not even in it. It's a story about two people who fall in love, and it has no like if you read it, it has you would think you're reading a romance novel. There's nothing about God in it. There's one of the books in the Bible. Yeah, it's a book in the Bible. The word God is not even in it. God is not even referred to in in the book. And then there's other statements, which I would not repeat, that are pornographic in the Bible, you know? That, that, that speak about, you know, uh, um, David sleeping with this woman and then spilling the, the, the semen. I mean, it's just, these are things I would not read to my children. So, I got to the New Testament, and the New Testament, you're like, ah, oh, you know, there's a little breath of fresh air. You know, because you make it through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But then as I start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, I started noticing something. That, that, that seemed weird was that okay all these guys are saying the same thing in a sense but they're repeating themselves like um, like Matthew and Luke are repeating the exact same things that are, in, that are in Mark so it looks like they're copying from Mark and then you get to John and John is, is a whole other story um, so I'm saying that all these four guys saw the same person saw the same events but told them all in four different ways you know like this doesn't like which one is the you know the, the correct story? Things that if you, if you were in a court of law, it wouldn't hold up. No, so but, you would throw it out. Yeah, no. Not only that, but when I started studying the Bible, I wanted to know who wrote these books. You know, so I started researching the author. And when you go through the Old Testament, eighty percent of it, the author is unknown. It's unknown. speculated. They yeah. speculate who wrote it. Like in the book of um, Deuteronomy, they say Moses wrote it, which which doesn't make sense because at the end it says Moses died. So did Moses like write it on a bitch way? You know, like all of these things did not make sense to me. So you get through the New Testament. Okay, it made some sense to me as a Christian because I believed all the doctrine uh, of, of Christianity. And Jesus is talking about God, you know, worshiping God, that, you know, servitude and honor and respect should be given to God alone. He never accepted it for himself. He would always try to put that back on God. You know, even when they came to him, good master, you know, he would say, why thou calls me good, there's none good. But one, that's God. And then Jesus taught that, you know, he came to fulfill the law. And the law is the law of Moses. He said, I have come to fulfill the law of Moses. He was a Jew, come to Jews. Because he even himself was asked why he didn't preach to the Gentiles. And he was told that, he told them, why should I cast my pearl to swine? I was not sent, but to the lost sheep of the children of Israel. So these things didn't make sense to me. Why I, I, Jesus was... Told that I was told that he was the salvation of all mankind, but even out of his own mouth, he's saying that he was sent but to the Jews, and that he was the one sent of lost children of Israel to come to fulfill the law of Moses. So you get past the Old New Testament, and then you get to the writings of Paul. And the writings of Paul go from like center field to way out of the ballpark somewhere, because now Paul all of a sudden introduces the creed. If you look at it, you know, from beginning to end, without just taking what the preacher says and listening to all these things bombarded at you from different ways, if you really look at it, it goes from Jesus saying one thing to Paul all of a sudden coming and saying, okay, Jesus died for your sins. You know, that, that you were born in the sin, 
because of Adam's, you know, uh, transgressions, you're born in sin, you inherited the sin nature. Now because of the sin nature, you need a redemption. Jesus had to come and sacrifice himself in order to free you from the sin nature. And I'm thinking to myself, I haven't read this, you know, like, where did Paul get this from? You know, because Jesus didn't say this. He didn't preach this, he didn't teach this. What about some people who say now that the Jews would actually sacrifice uh, animals in the Old Testament and they take examples from this? Okay, they, they did, and they yeah. still do. Yeah. And Muslims still do. Yeah. Because this is the, God's ways of doing things don't change. Yes. You, you know what I mean? He does not change his mind. God is not one way today, and then wakes up and decides, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it this way today. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna revamp this thing. We're gonna rescheme this That's whole, this whole salvation thing. You know, we're gonna rescheme it. We're just gonna throw a whole monkey wrench in the system. Yeah. Or better yet, I'm gonna wait thousands of years and let all these other people die, and then all of a sudden bring Jesus and say, okay, then this is how you get salvation is through Jesus. Doesn't I'm sorry sense. for all you other people. You know, that doesn't make sense. It, God, you know, it sounds like God would be playing with humanity. Which God did not create us for this purpose, you know. God's ways don't change. So you started to see these things and question these and things. And I started to see them and question them. And when I would take them to the pastors, they would tell me the same thing. I would hear the same thing over and over again. You know, they would put their hand on my shoulder, you know. Brother Joshua, don't let a little bit of knowledge wreck your faith. This is what they tell me. Don't let a little bit of knowledge wreck your faith because the devil will give you 99% of the truth to get you to believe 1% of the lie. So, you know, I, I tried to do that because I did not want to lose my faith in Christ. This is all I had. This is all I knew. This is the way of my forefathers. This is the way of my family. So I tried to go back into the Bible and shove my mentality into trying to find a way to make this stuff fit. Make it make sense. Let me make this thing make sense. You know, let me make this Trinity thing make sense. Because the Trinity, after reading the Bible, it just started not making sense. Because there's no verses in the, the Bible that speak of the Trinity. There's one... That if you study the Bible, it was not an original part of the Bible. It was put in, you know, later when, the, when the, um, the, Rome, the Bible was put together in Rome. So, I'm saying to myself out of all this, how do I fix this? Because Jesus is saying that, you know, the way to salvation. Someone came and asked him, how do I get eternal life? He said, follow the commandments. He said, okay, I've done that. He said, okay, then follow me. You know, sell everything you own and follow me. This was the way to salvation. Follow the commandments. Paul gets to the way of salvation, believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, if this was the way to salvation, why did Jesus not tell us this? Why did Jesus live his whole life and then say, you know what, if Paul had not come along, maybe they'll figure it out. I'm not going to tell them how to get salvation. I'm just going to let them try to deduce out of all these, you know, uh, um, ambiguous statements I made to let them figure it out thousands of years later. This does not make any sense to me. It doesn't me. make sense. I said, if God wants you to be a certain way, He would very clearly say, as Jesus very clearly said when He was asked, how can I get eternal life? I said to myself, and I told a pastor this, if the way to eternal life was believing in Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, He would have said it then. He would have clearly said it. And there is nowhere in the Bible where Jesus explicitly says that I'm coming to die for your sins, believe in my blood and my resurrection and then you'll be saved, you got paradise. Is there any explicit statement? There, that there's says? no explicit statement out of the mouth of Jesus Christ that has been verified by any Bible scholar. That he said, I came to die for your sins. There's none. Did Abraham say anything about that? There are some implicit, implicit verses that scholars, of, by, of biblical scholars, have deduced that this is what he meant. But if you weigh those implicit verses with other explicit things that he said, a ways to get salvation, then, then they automatically, the light of what he really meant comes to view. Can you give us a couple examples when we take this break and come right back on the Dean Show? Check this out. You're watching the Dean Show. This is the mail bag. We're taking a call right now. Yes, I know I've had you on hold. I appreciate that. Go ahead. And what's the question? Okay, we got it. Th thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, and be sure to watch us right here on the Dean Show. You know, every week, same time. That's right. Rightio. Okay. Salam alaikum warahmatullah. All right. This is Yusuf Estes. We're here on the Dean Show. This is the mailbag. And we take calls. 
uh, when it's live. When it's a live program, this is, we take the calls. Now, let me uh, go to the question of our caller, which coincides with one that I had received here. If I 